Well, hi. We're going to have a look at the very hot, sizzling hot topic of factorization and long division of cubic polynomials today. So let's get into it, shall we? It's a very interesting topic. So we want to find all the linear factors of the polynomial p of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 3. Now, there are several ways of doing this, okay? It's not like quadratics where you can sort of complete the square, that kind of thing. It's a little bit different. You have to start somewhere with cubics, and sometimes it's best to start, I always like to start, with the attempt to group them two by two if there are four terms in the cubic, okay? This sometimes works out to be surprisingly marvellous, which it will today, because I've chosen this one so that it will work just to show you. Now, if the if that doesn't work, we try guess and check, okay? And that's uh, that's that's just to get a start, where you find one linear factor, which then enables you to proceed with other techniques to find the others, okay? And one of those includes long division, and there are two others, and I will show you what they are. Now, grouping by two, watch this, it's absolutely marvellous. It may or may not work, but it's worth a try in the first instance because it just makes short work of the whole thing. Watch this, if I group those first two terms together by taking x squared out, and if I just simply then take minus one out of these two, you watch. It's like a miracle. Watch. I know! Ah! <laughs> what happened? Well, it was pretty marvellous, wasn't it? We've now got x minus 3 as a common factor out of the first two terms and out of the second two terms. So now are you sold? Are you a convert to grouping? It's very good. So when we take uh, x minus 3 out <clears throat> of both of those terms, you get an x squared left in the first term and a minus 1 left in the second term. And then you can factorise the uh, x squared minus 1 as a quadratic, which is a difference of two squares, and hence you get the result there, and the rest is history. Thank you, Mr. Box. Isn't that marvellous? It's truly marvellous. So, now we're going to assume, just for argument's sake, that that didn't work, okay? We couldn't group two by two. Now we're going to do the guess and check technique. So guess and check means you guess a solution to the equation, which we're going to try uh, one as our first starting guess, okay? <clears throat> and if you put 1 in there and you get 0, as indeed you do, as you can see, then x minus 1 is a factor, okay? That's the way the factor theorem works, okay? So now we've got x minus 1 is a factor. We have to find the rest of them, okay? But we've got a starting point now, and the first technique we're going to use out of three techniques is going to be long division. So <clears throat> let's write out our polynomial and our divisor. There's our polynomial and there's our divisor. We're going to write them out and we're going to long divide them just the way you were taught in um, primary school to divide numbers. But only we're going to divide algebraic um, little expressions, okay? So now the first thing you do is you say, well, what how many times does x, the leading term here, go into x cubed, the leading term there? Well, it goes x squared, doesn't it? Now you multiply through your divisor by that x squared, and what do you get? And now, the next step is to take away, okay? That's what we're doing. We're going to take away this expression from this expression, all of this expression, including those two terms there. Okay? Now, now there's a danger here. Look, be very careful. We're taking away, okay? So this is x cubed minus x cubed, and this is minus 3x squared minus negative x squared. Now, when you're minusing a negative, you know what happens, don't you? It turns it into a plus. So you watch this. Yes, you see, minus 3x squared plus x squared is minus 2x squared. Now, we'll bring the rest of it down, and we find that the next thing, just jump the gun there a little bit, um, what you do now is you say, okay, how many times does x divide into the leading term here? Because we have to repeat the whole process all over again, okay? Until 
you get a remainder which is less than the degree of the divisor. That's what you do, okay? Now this is our temporary remainder, but we, we go again, okay? So x goes into minus 2x squared minus 2x times. Let's now multiply x minus 1 by minus 2x and see what we get. And we go to subtract again. Okay, now you tell me. Work it out now before I reveal it to you. Yes, it's going to be minus 3x plus 3, isn't it? Good, good. Now, okay, we're still going. We've got to now, we've now got to say, okay, how many times does x divide into minus 3x? Well, it divides in at minus 3 times, doesn't it? Okay, now we multiply through the minus 3 by the x minus 1, and what do we get? And we're going to get no remainder. Whoopee. No remainder. So this is a perfect factor. There's no remainder. Um, so x minus 1 is a factor of x of that of that cubic polynomial okay it's a factor of it with no remainder so now do you get how to do that right you've always got to keep going even if there was a remainder here you would keep going with the division process until the degree of what you end up after the subtraction process is has an order of x a, an exponent of x less than the exponent of x in the divisor and this exponent of x being x to the 1 yeah good Okay, so now we know that from that, we know that x, the polynomial in x equals that thing there, okay, because we just got that as a result of dividing x minus 1 into the beast, the, 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 the cubic polynomial. Now all we've got to do now is factorise this and we're done. And that's nice and easy in this case, isn't it? Thank you. Where's Mr Box? I thought he was coming. Hello, Mr. Box. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Box. So there they are. They're the same. They're the same factors as we got over here with the grouping two by two. But if, obviously, in this case, guys, you wouldn't do this if the grouping two by two works because you're just wasting your time. I only did this this way just to show you how to do it. Okay. Excellent. Right. Uh, we're going to keep going here now. Okay. So. That's where we got to, the guess and the check. Now, here comes technique B after you've done the first initial guess and got your first linear factor, which was x minus 1. We're going to do this, what I call the alpha technique. It's a beautiful little technique all about equating coefficients. And you could use this if you don't like long division, okay? Now... Okay, we got to this point here, didn't we, where we can say that this uh, this polynomial, this cubic polynomial is, e is equal to x minus 1 times some mystery quadratic, which we're going to demystify very quickly here. Okay, now, how do you get that mystery quadratic, guys, without, without doing polynomial long division? You look at the leading term, okay, the leading term, and you realise that the leading term is formed by the product of the leading terms in this bracket and this bracket. So what I'm saying is that x times our mystery term equals x cubed. So what is our mystery term? Yes, that's what it is, okay? Now we'll do the same for the back term here, okay? The back term here. Now, that term there, that back term there in the polynomial expression is formed by the product of those two back terms in the brackets. The minus 1 times something or other gets us this plus 3. Now, can you imagine what that might be in here? I think I know. I think it's a minus 3. Yes, of course it is, isn't it? Now, all we're left now with, ladies and gentlemen, is the middle Term. So we call that alpha x, okay? Because it's a mystery coefficient. It'll be an x term, but we don't know the coefficient yet, and that's what we're going to find out with this equating of coefficients, which is a marvellous technique, which I've kind of affectionately called the alpha technique. Now, what you do is you expand either the x or the x squared term on the right-hand side. Only that much of it, not the whole thing. Okay, and then you equate coefficients with the left-hand side, which enables you to find alpha very simply. Now, let's just get going, and I'll show you what I mean. If you were... Say you take the x term on the right-hand side. Now, where do you get x terms from? You'll get an x term from both of these 
from this one multiplied by one of those three and from this one multiplied by one of those three, okay? So let's imagine where it comes from. Right, it's, yes, it's x times the minus 3 gets you an x term, doesn't it? And the minus 1 times the alpha x. They're both of the x terms you're going to get from the expansion of that right-hand side, okay? So, that's what you come to, okay? That's what you get, and therefore you then equate that just simplified a little bit for you, and you equate that to the left-hand side, because the x term on the left-hand side is minus x, yes? Okay, now see what's happening? See, the coefficient of this term here is minus 1, and that must be equal to this, because you just match them up. Yeah, so therefore you can solve it for alpha very simply, and alpha will be minus 2. Now, that you've got to agree, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to check this, just because I can make mistakes, particularly if I get tired, probably like you, and I'm going to check whether the x squared ties in with that, okay, the x squared expansion of the right-hand side. So where would you get those x squared expansion terms from? Oh, I've just showed you. Can you see that? You agree with me? Yes, good, okay. Well, that gets us minus x squared plus alpha x squared, isn't it? Yes, yes, and that's going to be equal to, on the left-hand side, where is it? This little beastie, okay, minus 3. So minus 3x squared equals all that thing on the right-hand side, and now we do the same thing again, and hopefully alpha is going to be minus 2 again. Otherwise we have to go back and fix whatever we've done wrong. Ah, uh, how sweet it is. It is. Isn't that great? So therefore, Yes, as before. So now, this is the, we haven't do, done any long division, and we've got the same result as we did via the long division. Yes, and now all we have to do is factorise that quadratic like that, and we've got our answer. How did you like it? You can choose. Do you like long division, or do you like um, the alpha technique? Of course, I like grouping two by two, because that's just the best of all, if it works, but it doesn't always work. Now, the third technique... Okay, first technique after guess and check was long division. Second technique after guess and check was the alpha technique. And the third technique after guess and check is this funny looking thing, synthetic division. Now, this is really something else, okay? This is very quick and it works a treat, okay? If you're dividing a polynomial by a linear factor, that's where it works, okay? So you take the coefficients of the polynomial, you phase them down one at a time. Now by that I mean, for example, if you had uh, just x cubed minus 1, you'd have to call that 1x cubed plus no x squared plus no x minus 1. Okay, like that, phasing them down 1x power at a time in a row, okay, next to each other. Then you make a table, three rows deep, okay, and then you take the divisor, which in this case is x minus 1, and you solve that equal to 0 for what x would be, which means in this case it would be 1. You put that in a box, okay, because that's our box. This is sometimes called the box technique, okay? Now, let's just uh, go ahead and show you how you do this. Now, see, there are my coefficients of the, of the cubic, right? Now I'm going to make a three-row table now, with the first row being those coefficients, right? The first row is the coefficients, the second row is a working row, and the third row gets us the coefficients of the result of the division of that cubic by x minus 1, which of course will be a quadratic, okay? Now, it's quite marvellous. So this is what you do. You put a dash in the first column second row position, because that's, a, that's actually, that second row is a carryover digit row, and it's sort of like a working row, and this position here, there's nothing to carry over from anything in the previous column, because there isn't a previous column, so we put a dash there, okay? Now, watch this. Fasten your seatbelt, it's really something. Okay, so we've got x is 1 in the box, yes? Now, what do you... Yes, that's the box. Okay, so this is the, these are the actual steps you now take to solve for the quadratic that you need, right? Okay, you add row 1 and row 2 in the current incomplete column, which would be the first column, right? The x cubed column. So what are we going to do? We're going to add row 1 and row 2. So we're saying 
This would be one plus nothing, which would get us, what would it get us? One. Yes? Now, that's the first thing you do. Now, the next thing you do is you multiply box by the current row 3, which is this one, okay, to get the next row 2. So what am I saying? I'm saying multiply this little beastie 1 by 1. 1 times 1 is 1, and put that there, okay? Now... That's the process. That's the process. And you just complete you just continue, you just repeat that process until you've completed the table. Okay? So what's the next step, guys? What do you do? Okay, what did step four say? Well, you've got to add for the current incomplete column, which is this one, minus three plus one gets us minus two. Now what do we do? We multiply box by the minus two to get this next position in row two. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And now you add up. You add, that's step four again. Okay, what's minus one? Minus two is minus three. Now you know what to do now. Okay, I don't have to tell you anymore. What's the next step? One times minus three is minus three. Plus three minus three is zero. Now, this there's our there's our result. Now this beastie here, this little column here, the very uh, right hand bottom cell, if you like, entry, right, here, that's the remainder, that's the remainder of the division, which in this case is, is, is naught, okay, so we're saying, we're saying that that, <laughs> look at that, we're saying that this divided by this gets us this, because these numbers here are the coefficients of the quadratic, um, if you don't quite get me, check this out, see there's a 1 there, corresponding to the 1 over over here, okay, that's this one there, and so on, okay. We've got that minus 2 there, which I've just pointed to with the arrow, is corresponding to this minus 2 over here, and of course the minus 3 there in the quadratic expression, which I've got here, corresponds to that minus 3 over there, and there's no remainder. Now that's pretty cool. Plus nothing over x minus 1 remainder, okay, so there's no remainder at all. So it is a factor of the expression, okay. Isn't that great? So that's how you do it, Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Box. So there you go. Guys, it's something else, isn't it? So I've, I've, um, I've showed you how to factorise cubic polynomials by firstly guess and check, if you can. Second, oh, not, not guess and check, what am I saying? Um, factoring group by, uh, two by two, grouping two by two, if you can. Then guess and check, followed by either polynomial long division or the alpha technique or synthetic division. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day and see you next time. Bye.